Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to give you some tips how to organize your one-day trip to the Forbidden City in Benjin and how to survive there. Let's start! If you watch my video, you probably want to go there or you've heard it's worth seeing. That's true, it is. However, be prepared for the trip and avoid the mistakes or disappointments. In the beginning, I would say the Forbidden City is very crowded and enormous, but is very interesting because it's so old and the details are incredible. Be prepared and buy your tickets in advance online. Even though you will still have to wait in line to get in, be aware for a long queue and waiting to enter. Some people reported it is possible to buy tickets on the place. However, I don't recommend it. You need to scan the QR code they offer. The entire website is in Mandarin and even if you translate the website you discover, you need to put there a phone number to receive the confirmation SMS text to get the actual tickets. The main problem will be that you have probably a foreign phone number and it will keep saying there is a format error or you removed your phone card to avoid big costs. Therefore, the best solution is to buy the tickets on the Forbidden City's official website or via a credible travel agency. It helps you save time. Please remember, on Mondays it is closed. No people, no excursions. When entering the Forbidden City, visitors are required to pass through a security checkpoint as if they were at an airport, checking their luggage, backpacks and even small handbags using an X-ray scanner. In addition, your passport will be scanned and the visa checked. Combine your trip to the Forbidden City with visiting Tiananmen Square. It is one of the most famous landmarks in all of China. There is a 39-meter-high granite monument to the people's heroes. Maybe for Chinese people it is important to visit the monument. However, in my opinion, it is better to see the monumental gate of heavenly peace, for short Tiananmen. Although the entrance is free of charge, the tickets must be booked at least one or two days in advance. Don't do it just before the entrance, because the application is in Mandarin and requires your phone number. I asked the guard and he did it for me. I was lucky because he was the only one guard speaking English. You may miss this guard. Visitors from around the globe and China come to have their picture taken in front of the photo of Charman Mao. There's no fee to walk through the gate, but there is a fee to climb the tower. Bugs are not permitted inside the tower and must be stored during the visit. The gate is located just north of Tiananmen Square, originally built during the Ming Dynasty as an entrance to the Imperial City. Today, it's one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city. After you take a few photos with Mao and go through the gate, you will only be around 300 meters away from the entrance to the Forbidden City. It's a massive 15th century palace complex that once served as the royal residence of 24 Chinese emperors. It's also one of the Beijing's top attractions and a UNESCO World Heritage listed compound. Wear comfortable shoes and be prepared to walk. The Forbidden City is huge. It's the largest and best preserved collection of wooden architecture in the world. It spans approximately 150,000 square meters and has over 9,000 palaces. 
Exploring this huge man-made heritage is a challenge which takes at least three hours. Therefore, simplify the content of your bag and just take the necessary items, such as food, a bottle of water and a camera. There are no dining options during the tour or restaurants. Don't forget to wear sunscreen, sunglasses and a hat, as the square provides little shade. The easiest way to get there is to take the Beijing Subway Line 1 to either Tiananmen East or Tiananmen West or Line 2 to Tiananmen. Several public buses also stop at the square. Expect big crowds and long lines at the Fort Bidgen City and Mouse Museum during peak tourist season in summer and or Chinese public holidays. Buy an additional ticket to Treasure Gallery. Most of the collections were made by the Royal Workshop and some of the treasures were tributes by local officials at festivals. Most of these treasures were made of precious materials including gold, silver, jade, pearl and other gems and created by renowned designers from across the country. These items represent the highest artistic standards of the times and are worth seeing. If you don't expand your knowledge of the Fort Bidgen city before your trip, you will just observe it without being able to fully experience the strong historic atmosphere there. There is only a little on-site information available in English. Therefore, watch videos or learn more about Chinese architecture and the history of the Ming and Qing dynasties. Also see my videos that will give you the basic knowledge about the monuments in the Forbidden City and prepare you to visit this place. Links to the videos are given in the description. They are in Polish, however you can set subtitles in many languages. That's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you discover useful information and enjoy your stay in the Forbidden City. Bye!